was hoping so. This is the good part. You guys ready for the good stuff? This is the good stuff. Woo. You know why it's good stuff? It's got cool words in it, man. <coughs> words like fundamental and theorem and calculus. We're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. Oh. <laughs> I really like to see what your weekend consists of. <laughs> Just like in front of the mirror doing all this oh. stuff. <laughs> When I go to the gym to get my pump, I just go, derivative! <laughs> that's it? No, that's not true. <laughs> Think of that kid that you picked up. Basically. <laughs> Here's what you know so far. You know that this is an area. You also know how to calculate indefinite integrals. You know how to calculate them like this. That this was capital F of X plus C. Remember the plus C part, all doing that? We know how to do integrals. We've, we've done that already. Here's what this represents, though. What this says is, OK, an integral represents an area. This is the antiderivative. But what do we do with that plus C? Let's talk about that for right now, and then we'll have a really good picture of what's going on. So here's our, I'll use the same graph I have over there. Here's our graph, and this is f of x. We're looking for the area. What we want to do is find the area from a to b. That's the goal without using our Riemann sums or the summation notation. We don't want to do that. We want to really just think of this as an integral because we know an integral geometrically represents the area. So how can we go from this picture and this thing and tie it all together? What we want is the area from a to b. Here's how we're going to think of it. We're going to think of it as, well, well, how about this? Could you find the distance from A to B? How would you do it? You would do B minus A. If this was 10 and that was 3, you'd do 10 minus 3, right? We're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to say, let's take the area up to B minus the area up to A. Would that make sense to you? We'll take all of this area minus off all of this area. No matter where you start, that would work for you. Would you agree? We'll take all the area from left to right, all the area, no matter where we start, up to B, and subtract off all the area up to A, and that would leave us with this little bit. How many people buy into that feel okay with it? That's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll take the area up to B. Starting from infinity? Starting from wherever you want. It does not matter, as long as you start the same point for both. Well, we're, I have to give you something that this makes sense, right? And the, and the way to do that, we, we are going to start at A and go to B, but find the actual, you're going to see why we have this next piece in there. But right now, if I, if I give it to you, it, you'll probably follow it, but I want you to understand the concept of why we have a subtraction in this at all. Okay, and we're going to have one right now. So let's think of it. If, so, the area is... This is not changing. The area is this. What we're going to do is take the area up to B 
minus the area up to A. Now here's what you have to realize. What we're doing here is calculating the area function. Do you remember me, me introducing that to you a long time ago? That this indefinite integral actually has an area function. It was a family of curves. We just know which one it was. Well, if we have that family of curves and we're going to an actual point that says this is where you're going, you're stopping here, that solidifies it for you. It's no longer indefinite, it's definite. You're starting at one point, you're stopping at another point. So this right here, that's an area function, and we actually have something to plug into it. We have the, the point, well, where are we stopping? The area up to B, you find the area by plugging in B. The area up to A, you find the area by plugging in A. So the area from A to B is the area up to B. The area up to B. That would include wherever your starting point, wherever your starting point is for area, that would include everything up to the point B. Everything above the x-axis to the point B. You got me? And then we'd subtract off this point A. Now, really, what we'd consider is starting from zero. That way we're not being silly about it and going way too far. We'd say, hey, let's just go from zero, okay? You'd have this area minus this area. It'd give you what's remaining. The area up to B, plug in B. The area up to A, plug in A. That's how you do a definite interval. You find the antiderivative, and you plug in your bounds. It's actually that easy. Not bad? Not bad. No, come on, now there's one, one question out there. What's the question? Come on, do you see it? What do you do with C? Oh, good. Do you see it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where's the C? By the way, this right here, this statement, is the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. I'll give you part one later. <laughs> <laughs> Fundamental theorem of calculus, part two. What happens to the C? Oh dear, why don't we have a C? Well, you do know definitely, so we shouldn't have a C. But when you think about it, remember when we're finding out this, this right here? This is a family of curves, right? How do you actually know where it's at? Wouldn't a curve way up here have a different area than one right here? Mm -hmm. it's clearly, the height would be different. So why does this even work? Well, think about this for a second. What about the C? Not C. Suppose you considered it. Um, by the way, the way that you you write this, um, I should actually give it to you this way. One more thing. This is also written. f of x, that's an evaluation symbol from a to b. That's how you can write that. And we're going to be practicing that as well. It says the same thing. Okay, this, this and this is the same. How you do this is you plug in b and you subtract off a. You plugged in b to your antiderivative and you subtract it off f of a. Are you guys okay with the notation? So when you see that, that line right there, it's like half a bracket. It goes from a to b. That's what that means. So if this equals this, and this equals this, let's suppose that we actually included the C. Now some of you might be wondering, what well, well, when you think about it, you might be wondering, why don't we have a C1 and a C2? Say it again. They're the same constant. Why are they the same constant? How do we know that for sure? He's right. Why? Say it louder. They're from the same 
They're from the same function. If you're integrating that same function, you're not switching functions on me, are you? Integrating the same thing. Then whatever C you get is your C. No matter what you're plugging in, that's going to be the same function itself. Does that make sense? So wherever you're at, that's the same function. If we integrate it one time, look what's going to happen. If you have f of b plus c, it's not c1, it's just c. f of a plus c is not c2, it's just c. What's going to happen to my c's? Wherever your c is, wherever your c is, that height, that height difference will be eliminated. It drops out of your equation, as your book likes to call it. The c's are gone. So remember, the plus c, that's just the height, right? Height of your function. Even if it's way up here, same type of function, just way up there. But both of them would be way up there. The f of b plus c, f of a plus c, we're subtracting out that plus c part. The plus c's will be eliminated from your equation. And that's how we get what we get. So the C is gone, drops out, so we don't write it for our definite integrals. Indefinite? Absolutely. But definite, we should end with a number, end with an area, because this thing is an area. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we talked about so far today? Would you like to try a couple examples? You're going to really like these, by the way. Are you ready to really like something yes. in this class? <laughs> You're sunk now. <laughs> okay, so an integral from 1 to 5 of x dx. This is an area, which means we should end with a number. It's actually a definite integral. Why is it a definite integral and, an, and not an indefinite integral? Right there. there. There are bounds, or bounds of integration. We actually have numbers. We should end with an area. Now, can you integrate x dx? Yeah. Easily. Yeah, we, we already did that. No, no need for limits, no need for any of that stuff that you spent your whole life doing just now, okay? It's doable, you did it, right? But this is a shortcut, not a shortcut, I guess it's a shortcut to doing it. What is the integral of x, please? Where are we integrating from? Where do we start our area, where do we stop our area? One to five. Why don't we have a plus c here? Even if it fell out, even if we, even if we did, it's gone because you can subtract it off anyway. It's the same plus c. One to five. Here's how you show your work. You do this step first. You show me what your integral is. You show me where you are plugging in numbers from. You plug in the top one first, subtract, then plug in the bottom one. This would be five squared over two minus one squared over two is how you show that. Do you see where the 5 and the 1 are coming from? So we're going to get 25 halves minus 1 half. How much is that? 12. Yeah, 24 halves is 12. Is that quicker than a Ramon sum? All the stuff you can do with left endpoints? Yeah. What is 12? What's 12? Exactly right. Area under that curve which is just a diagonal line from 1 to 5. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other stuff is, is good to know. It, it shows yeah. you where it's coming from. It shows you why you're doing it. It shows you how you do it. And you, you, you make sure you know what, what all this stuff means. Right?